What's going on everybody? John Eric Pola here with my MMA news and today's guest will be fighting at UFC Noche which will take place on September 16th and just to remind all the fans out there too that's a very big card championship fight in the main event with uh, Valentina Shevchenko looking to get revenge on Alexa Grasso but it will not be a pay-per-view event just so everybody is aware of that so make sure you guys have ESPN plus and get all that squared away ahead of time anyway with that being said let's welcome in today's guest Josh Frem Josh nice to see you again man how are you Hey, I'm doing well, doing well, man. Good to be back talking to you. Yeah, it's funny. I know we were just talking a little bit before we started this recording process and came on air here, and we were saying it feels like we just did this, and we literally did just, just do this. Did you it. did just fight <laughs> about uh, this fight actually taking place just over a month uh, from your last one, so we really are speaking pretty quickly here. Since that time, uh, I know a big thing has happened. You've gotten a new UFC contract. Let's start right there. Give us all the details with that. Um, yeah, got a new four fight deal. Uh, something that I was hoping for, you know, um, starting off 2022 going 0 and 2 wasn't really looking too high on it. So, uh, to be able to dig my heels in, fight back, and get a new contract and give me more opportunities, more chances to go out, make some money, prove myself that's all I've ever wanted. So, uh, I'm excited for that. And when we did our last interview, you were talking a little bit about like contract negotiations and everything. And I had asked you, you know, you want to stay active. Do you think that's going to help with this process? Did indeed that help? Because like you told me we were off air, you were just getting ready to fly back home to Pittsburgh and hey, hey, yeah. don't fly. Don't don't go anywhere. We got a fight booked right away. Yeah, I was uh, I was uh, I was looking into going home and hanging out for a little bit. But um my manager found an opportunity and said that it would be a good idea to take it. And it's a good matchup. I like the matchup and it got me a new contract. So here we are. And this is going to be your second fight. Like I said, just like a little over a month. I think it's like five weeks is the exact time frame on it. So I got to ask, I mean, how is the body feeling? That is a lot going through in a short period of time. You know what? Um, I think honestly it's helped me uh, because a lot of people after fights, because if, especially if they're doing fight camps, like for this, my last fight, I did have a fight camp and I was working weeks on end, um, just beating myself up. When people usually get done with fight camps, they want to take a couple weeks off, you know, and they get fat and they start eating unhealthy again. They start being lazy. So it was kind of like I took four or five days. I ate some good food. I didn't go out and have like 27 cheeseburgers or anything, but I had an, a, a nice dinner, um, hung out with some friends for a bit. And then once I figured out I was fighting again, I was right back in the gym. So I probably took five days off total, but I liked that better because it didn't allow me to do that. It didn't allow me to go out and be like, oh, well, I don't have a fight coming up. I can go out and drink with the boys. I can go uh, hang out and do this and eat this. And so it was kind of good. I, I enjoy the fact that I'm back. I was right back into camp and there was no like, Oh, you got to get in shape. Well, I'm already in shape. Let's just sharpen up some things and let's go back after it. And I was going to ask too, uh, you know, kind of about the mental side of things about staying sharp mentally in between, uh, a, a quick, a quick turnaround like this, I guess, does that kind of feed into kind of what you were just saying there? Forget about the physical part of it, but just the fact that you were able to stay kind of mentally in that zone, never really getting away from it, like you were saying, going out to eat, eating 27 cheeseburgers, all that stuff. Does that kind of, I guess, help with the mental side of it that you didn't really get that big long break? Yeah, it does. And it, and it also, I think internally for me, I, I personally am not happy with the performance that I showed. So for me to be able to recoup get back in there in a month bodes well for me because mentally i'm pissed off at myself i'm pissed off at the performance i put out there and i am better than what i showed and i want to go show that so there really was no want for me to go out and do all that because i was in contact with my manager and i said like if something does come up like let's jump on it let's do this like because i don't want to sit here even though it's a win, even though it's a win, it's not a win how I wanted. So I'm excited to go back and get back on the horse. 
and I know that you are your tough, toughest critic, and you admit that all the time. Uh, what was it about the last performance, I guess, that leaves that little bit of like a sour taste in your mouth? And like, what is it that you want to do now here on September 16th to kind of maybe give, you know, take a little pressure off yourself, let you smile about a victory and be happy about it? Oh, I mean, I just, I messed up my weight cut. It uh, didn't allow me to go out and perform how I know I perform and how I perform every day in the gym. Um, it just made my arms feel like they were a million pounds. And there were moments in the fight that I settled in certain positions where I normally don't settle, or I would get to a dominant position and I wouldn't throw in fear of being too tired or getting into a scramble and certain things like that. Like just different things in the fight that I didn't allow myself to instinctively do that I normally do because I was aware too much of the botched weight cut and how it's affecting my uh, gas tank, if you will. All right, so let's get into, I guess, the specifics of this fight, and we'll get into the preparation first. Uh, I'm, I was going to ask, you know, how's camp going? Is this really, though, a camp like you were kind of saying before because you never really left the gym? Is this more kind of just getting back in the gym and just kind of doing a little game plan because you're already coming into camp in shape and all that? Yeah, it's honestly, to me, it's an extension of last fight and i'm not this is in no way disrespectful do not i hope no one takes it like this um but since jamie pickett and roman are both south paws it was just for me it's like all right we're leveling up here on in south paws and in, in striking abilities you know what i mean so it was i'm not going to use a certain word i'm because i don't want it to come off disrespectful but i think that this is good i'm building off the things that i've learned last camp that i can now use in this camp and I wonder what the vibe's like at the gym, too, at the moment. Obviously, you know, you're in very high spirits, getting back-to-back -back wins, getting a new contract. Uh, I know Anthony Smith just picked up a victory. Rumors about Brandon Royval possibly being next in line for the uh, flyweight championship fight. He kind of made that uh, known on Instagram there. So what, just what the vibe's like whenever you go into practice. Is everybody really excited, happy? And I'm sure that has to be a lot better going to practice when the vibes are high than when they're low, that's for sure. All right, let's not get words minced or twisted or anything like that brandon raw dog royval is next in line there is no if ands or buts there is no one else it is raw dog but yes vibes are high in the gym uh factor x is just on a roll right now in this past month and uh yeah i mean everyone is rolling right now vibes are high and we have a huge week coming up because not only do i fight saturday we have this kid, Jacoby Jones, for the Dana White Contender Series. He is absolutely a stud. And then the following Saturday, we have Cody Brundage and AJ Fletcher fighting on that card. So, like, we, we're on a roll here. So, I'm excited for the upcoming weeks. Yeah, you guys are definitely staying busy. That's for sure there. Uh, let's talk about you here now a little bit in this fight. Uh, let's talk about the opponent now. Just what have you seen out of him? I know you're really excited about this matchup. You really like it. Uh, just kind of tell everybody how you kind of see things playing out here. I see things playing out with me getting my hand raised no matter the, the way. Whether it's me knocking him out, me decisioning him, me submitting him. I just think that the only way that Roman can win this fight is if he knocks me out. If he doesn't knock me out, where is he going to beat me? I don't see him out wrestling me. I don't see him having a better gas tank than me. I don't see him. He might be faster than me the first minute, but after that, like when you can't knock me out, what are you going to do? So I think that it's a good matchup. Um, he is very good at striking. Let's not mistake that. Like he is someone I wake up and I'm like, all right, I need to get to work because he is good. He has a strong left high kick, a strong left kick period. And he's really fast with his jab. So he is dangerous, but I do think he's one-dimensional. And this fight, too, uh, the UFC is really pushing it, being that it's the uh, Mexican Independence Day uh, card for the UFC, even though the fights are in Las Vegas. They are hyping it up. I know making a big thing. Obviously, having Alexa Grasso in the main event and all that. Uh, I know the UFC is expecting a lot of eyes on this card, uh, a lot of people in the arena. You've been saying you really wanted to get in uh, to a show that has those packed house uh, again. Now you are getting that opportunity. Just how much are you looking forward to showing up on fight night and having a big full arena? and everybody cheering you on and all that man it's 
it's a dream come true. Like that is part of fighting. That's part of the sport of fighting in the UFC and MMA. And I'm so excited about it. I'm going to take everything in. I'm not going to rush anything. And I'm just going to be present in those moments because shit, dude, 12 year old Josh looking at this now, just mind blown because that's where we wanted to be. And for me personally with this card, I'm really looking forward to it. I'm sure a lot of fans are too, because ever since Valentina Shevchenko had lost her belt, I just like I couldn't wait for this rematch just to see how she responds, being the great champion that she was and all that. Just wanted to get your thoughts on uh, that main event. I, 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 if you're a fighter that doesn't like to do uh, predictions, not asking necessarily for a prediction, but just the thoughts on the fight. Yeah, I mean, I also, I'm, I'm a fan just as well, and I was excited for Bullet to get another opportunity to see, you know, was it a fluke, was it not a fluke, you know, because crazy things in this sport happen. It's small gloves, quick, people are sweaty. Yeah, I mean, I'm not going to give a prediction because I like both of the uh, fighters. I think they're both very, very talented. One's an obvious Hall of Famer, and I think that we're going to, as the fans, we're going to be in for a treat. All right, Josh, now to the big question here. Of course, uh, in a few days here, we're recording this here on uh, on a Tuesday. Uh, coming up here uh, Thursday, the NFL season officially kicks off. Your Steelers play Sunday. My Packers play Sunday as well, like most of the NFL will be doing. What's the excitement level? Are you starting to really get super excited? It's here. We've been talking about football the last couple of times that you've been on here. And it's yeah. like, now it's finally here. My excitement level's through the roof. What about yours? I, man, I was, after my workouts, me and a couple of buddies went and watched college football, just getting ourselves primed, you know, ready for it. I've been trying to hold back my fandom just because um, I feel like I need to do a better part of marketing myself as a, as an athlete and fighter and everything. And I'm always like, Oh, this, that, and the other, but I'm excited, dude. Football season is here. Um, I am a huge believer in Kenny Pickett. And I think that the Steelers are going to shock a lot of people. Um, I've been seeing a lot of different interviews and sports professionals and the experts saying that the Steelers are going to suck this year. Man, I can't wait till they eat those words and then the bungles just get mauled on. I know. I I don't know what it is with the NFL media. Uh, I don't know. I feel like they're all more like on like this national hot take type of a thing. Like when you follow the beat reporters, you really see, you know, the guys that are there covering every day. You really get the vibe behind the team. And I I can relate because the Packers are getting similar vibes to the Steelers. A lot of people all of a sudden are now saying they're going to surprise people. You know, so I, again, I hear you there. Uh, I'm on the excitement level for it. Question, I guess, for you, though, since you're out in Denver, do you ever go to any Broncos uh, games or you save it off when you get back home and go to the Steelers? No, I've actually been to quite a few Broncos games. Um, I have a friend who actually works for the Broncos in their media. So um, we've, me and a buddy, a couple of buddies, I've gotten some tickets and uh, they're super cool. I mean, Denver is absolutely gorgeous and going to a football game, granted, you know, Broncos suck, but uh, it's a fun time. It's a fun time. And maybe, who knows, Russ this year, maybe we'll see the old Russ. Yeah, well, not only old Russ, but uh, Sean Payton too coming to town there in Denver. I got to raise some excitement levels there for everybody, I'm sure. Uh, but yeah, Josh, listen, man, really appreciate the time as always. It's always great chatting with you. Can't wait for when we get to actually talk about how our teams are doing instead of our excitement level for them. Hopefully the next time we speak, we're talking about victories and how uh, our teams are proving everybody wrong some more here. Uh, but again, man, really appreciate the time. Just last thing before you head out for the day, social media, management, sponsorships, all that good stuff that you got to plug any shout outs you got to give. Take it away, man. Uh, yeah, Josh Fremd MMA on all of my socials, Instagram, Twitter, all that. Um, I do want to give a huge out to uh, a huge shout out to one of my biggest sponsors and really good friends uh, who owns uh, Habitual Vape and Skate Shop, Cody Price. He's uh, he's been with me since I was an amateur. Like we met as friends in a boxing gym, and the guy's just he's just always been amazing to me. So uh, check them out and all my teammates at Factor X. We're gonna have another great month.